suit to video cassette. Hello? Hello. Who is this? If you tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I don't think so. What's that noise? Popcorn. You making popcorn? Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Oh, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. Someone is playing a deadly game. It all began with a scream over 911. Someone who's seen one too many scary movies. Now, he's taken his love of fear. Hello? Hello, Sydney. One step too far. Do you like scary movies? What's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act as he's running up the stairs and she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a scary movie. Number one, you can never have sex. Never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. Get another beer, you want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. <laughs> most wanted list. Low Mason American muscle for the Russian mafia. Considered to be the most ruthless criminals at large. The hell is that? A bug. Go! Go! go. But the bust went bad. Leo! Get in the car! And two vicious killers are on the run with only one cop left on their trail until... We're going to be in the room with a killer. 
Over 25 top critics call it one of the year's 10 best movies. I reckon what you just wanted to know is what I'm doing in here. I killed some folks quite a while back. They told me I'm well from it now. Why are you letting him out? He's free, his time's up. That's the rules. After 25 years, Carl Childers is coming back to his hometown. Carl, see if you can figure out what's wrong with this thing. Won't crank up and everything seems to be put together right. It ain't got no gas in it. Finding a friendship he never had. My name's Frank Lee. What's your name? Carl's my name. It's that strange looking man behind you. That's Carl. I met him at the laundry, man. Nice to meet you, Carl. And a family he has always wanted. Mama said you can stay over with us. I like the way you talk. Well, I like the way you talk. You're still retarded, are you? Stop, no. I'm a support for it. He threatened to kill her if she ever left. You're gonna learn to live with my rule. Doyle is a monster. But when the darkness comes back into his life... He's mean to you and your mama. He's forced to make a decision he hasn't had to make in 25 years. I'm gonna kill you dead in a doornail. Starring Dwight Yoakam, John Ritter, J.T. Walsh. Written, directed, and starring Billy Bob Thornton. And nominated for two 1996 Academy Awards for Best Actor and Best Adapted Screenplay. Will you ever kill anybody again, Carl? I don't reckon I got no reason to kill nobody. Sling Blade. Hi, I'm Quentin Tarantino. And welcome to the new Rolling Thunder video release. The film we're about to see is the black comedy thriller Curdled, which was uh, directed by Rev Raddick and produced by John Moss and written by the writing team of Rev Raddick and John Moss. And it stars uh, Billy Baldwin, who plays a sadistic serial killer named Paul Gwell, who's uh, preying on the rich ladies of Miami. He's known as the Blue Blood Killer in the film. And the second star of the film is Angela Jones, who's actually the female lead. And she plays a character named Gabriella who, I'm not even going to describe anything about Gabriella, I'm just going to let you discover her for yourself. But now when you see Gabriella, and you think, hmm, I wonder where I've seen this actress before, uh, it's probably because you saw Pulp Fiction, and she plays Esmeralda Villalobos, the cab driver that drives Bruce Willis to Fabian, the getaway, you know, boxing thing. Anyway, uh, I was executive producer on the film, which basically means I helped get the movie made. Uh, there's a lot of interesting, there's, a couple, there's one in particular interesting story about how I kind of, how this all came about, which I'll tell you at the end of the film. But right now, just kind of sit back, watch the film, and I'll be back afterwards to kind of tell you some amusing anecdotes. And thanks for uh, getting a Rolling Thunder video. Bye. And now, our feature presentation. Tarantino, and welcome to the outro for Curdled. Now, um, the way Curdled kind of came about is kind of an interesting story. I had I had uh, uh, just made Reservoir Dogs, and was kind of at one of the very first festivals I had actually gone to with it. Was uh, this um, festival in Italy called uh, Via Reggio? This uh, film in noir. It was just basically a crime and thriller film festival, and. Um, I spent a whole year going to festivals with Reservoir Dogs, but in particular, I always kind of really enjoyed the genre festivals, you know, the, you know a horror film festival or a uh, you know, mystery film festival, stuff like that. They're, they're always a, like a, a lot of fun. And um, so I was in one of the first festivals like this I'd ever been at. And Via Reggio is this beautiful city in Italy, uh, right off this coast beach. It's terrific. Recommend it if you ever get a chance to go. Um, thing is, I'm at this festival, and I was, like, kind of hanging out with a buddy there, and then they had, like, a night of uh, four short movies. You know, the rest of it's, like, normal features, and they had four short films. All right, and I'm, you know, new filmmaker, you know, just done my first film and everything, kind of going around peddling it, and it's like, oh, man, you know, I should go to this short film thing, you know, I gotta support my brother filmmakers, you know, starting off and stuff, you know, gotta do that, I gotta, you know, give back, just by, by attending, you know. So, I show up, and um, there's four short films playing. The first one, 
It's really bad. Okay, really bad film. Okay, second one, please. It ain't any good either. Now, also, you have to understand something. Like, when you go to film festivals, you see, like, one movie, and then you're, like, hauling ass to get to another theater in time to see the next one starting right afterwards. All right. Well, we had, me and my buddy had another movie to go to, and we didn't eat. So we're watching these, like, these short films, hungry and not liking them. All right. So then we heard that one of the films is kind of long. It was, like, about, like, a 20-minute movie. I'm like, oh, my God. All right. The third one starts. The third one is so bad, I cannot tell you. It was just pathetic, all right? And it was, like, irritating. And, like, oh, God, well, at least we got the long one out of the way, all right? Only to find out that that was, it seemed like 30 minutes, but it was only 10 minutes. Okay, the long one is the last one coming up. All right, and then I turn to my friend, and I go, we got to get out of here, man. I mean, I am hungry, and this is, I just can't deal anymore, all right? But then they said, and we'd like to announce that the producer and writer of uh, our last short film, Kurgle, is in the audience. Uh, John Moss, please have stand up, all right? So John Moss stands up and everything. And I'm like, oh, God, I can't walk out. I'm like, guys, here, you know? And, and they, you know, and they say, and the film was actually, it's not a private short film. It's, it's, it's a student film. And uh, I was like, oh, great. Oh, this is like truly a student film we're going to see and a 20-minute student film at that, all right? Which if you've seen a lot of student films, the idea doesn't exactly make your mouth water. All right, and so I was like, well, wait, I can't just like that before the film starts and walk out. That's just a little too rude. But we're going to give them a chance. But if it sucks as bad as these other ones, then we're walking out, and that's just, that's like me. So um, me and my friend kick back. Curdle starts, and it it was one of the, the it was one of the, the funnest, most interesting short films I had ever seen. It was totally charming, extremely funny, like incredibly sick. This like wonderful like realistic look that you've never thought of before of uh, you know this this you know forensic cleaning surface. You know yeah, it's one of the things I'm watching the movie. I'm like, oh wow, I, I guess that would exist. I never spent the the second or so I would think to think about something like that, but yeah, I guess that would exist. So anyway, um, I just had a blast, and um, and then the normally, especially if you see a student film, you know, uh, uh, um, you gotta you know forgive a lot, all right. And you, there's but there's a lot of good things in them. But one of the things that's usually not in them that's very good is the acting. You know, the acting is you know getting student actors and some and also it's really funny because most. Uh, it's not very well known, but most film departments in um, colleges, you have a theater department and you have a film department, and they never really, you know, uh, 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 work with each other, all right? So you have the actors in the theater department, they don't know anybody in the film department and actually probably don't like them, and versa vice as far as the film department with the, uh, 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 with the theater department. So basically all you have in student films is all the, the director's friends and um, uh, brothers and sisters and everything, and then they can act. Or the actors are like, you know, doing Tennessee Williams plays and no one's ever meeting each other. Well, it just so happens that in this case, through some weird thing of luck, Angela Jones, who was in the theater department, heard about Curdled and uh, 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 like got the job for the student film. And I'm sitting there watching the, watching the short film in Via Reggio, and it's like, who is this girl? She's absolutely terrific. I love her. I think she's wonderful. My God, I've, um, I've never seen an actress carry a student a student film before, and she totally did. She was, you know, she was terrific in it. And this is her character. I just loved it so much. I just couldn't get it out of my mind. So when the film was over, I, I went up to John Moss, the producer and writer of the film. He came up with the original idea for it and said, my God, man, what a good film. I'm so proud of you. You did a great job and everything. And, and, you know, I think you could turn this material into a feature. I think, I think it could bear it. I, I want to see more with that character. I want to see more with that story. But I said that the main thing, though, is you've got to keep that girl. In it. you got to keep that girl to keep playing uh, uh, Gabriella. You've got to use her, all right? You know, build up the killer part a little bit more and, and get a name that you can put in there. But, but, and he will take her along. You, you, you've got to use Angela. An and you've got to use Angela because it's a really kind of a hard character that she has. And she just has got it. She just got that twinkle in her eye. You know, because Angela isn't too ridiculously far different from Gabrielle. <laughs> That's one of the reasons that twinkle is there. And like, it's, and th that twinkle, you could search forever to find that twinkle as far as that character is concerned. And it doesn't work without it. So I go, you were lucky the first time. Stay with her. 
And so they did. And uh, what happened is they, they spent like a year writing the script and everything. And I wasn't like officially involved with it. It's just supporting them, you know, like, hey, guys, give me a thumbs up every once in a while. And um, finally, about a year later, they showed me a script. And I really liked it. They, they had really, I thought, expanded it very well. And I thought the story bared it, and it was terrific. And so um, um, I climbed aboard as the producer at Talk Mirror Max and um, helping them out, make the movie. Did it for a really little amount of money, about $2 million. And so it was like, kind of like one of those things, you know, nice good movies. So go ahead, guys, have a ball. And they did. And I'm really proud of like, exactly what happened with it. It's really good. So anyway, that's the end of Curdled, and I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, as much as we enjoyed making it for you. And um, that's it for Rolling Thunder Home Video. See you next time. <laughs>